Big win. Sabres over the Habs. Our first to fin again off in a couple of years. That's a very simple explanation to get to when we come back. Lots coming up here in the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. We want to also encourage you to sign up for our Locked On Sabres text line. Become a sortie at joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Sabres. And there is one comment from last night's win over Montreal, 6-1, to one, that I want to get to uh, on that. In fact, a point to be made from the game uh, on Tage Thompson that I had not thought of, but I think it's a really good thought from one listener so stay tuned for that but a big win six to one big even in terms of the score if you don't think for the standings it's our first a finnegan off since march 31st of 2021 i'm gonna start calling six to one games a finnegan off number 61 six to one 14 in saber history so i'm not gonna be doing that that often but you gotta love it when they win like that and it was a game where it didn't seem to me like it was going to get out of hand the way that it did. Now, a couple of late goals kind of contributed to that, including an empty netter when the Sabres were up three with about five minutes to play. So there were a lot that contributed to the Sabres pulling away at the end, but a four-goal third period and a very solid overall effort. Other than like a six- to seven-minute stretch, the Sabres were the better hockey team against Montreal. Have my sneaky stars, by the way, coming up as well. But the stats of this game show how good the Sabres played against the Montreal Canadiens in front of 21,000 people at Bell Center. The Sabres in this game outshot Montreal 38-33. to Shot attempts at 5-on-5, five five, 58 for Buffalo, 49 for Montreal. Scoring chances at 5-on-5, five five, 28 for the Sabres, 19 for the Habs. The expected goals for in this game, 4.0 for Buffalo, 3.6 for Montreal. And the one of the big stories of this game, the Sabres power play showed up. Holy cow, we haven't seen a game like that from the power play where you get multiple goals in a long time. And they look dangerous even at other times when they weren't scoring. The Sabres go two for four on the power play while Montreal reside, it resided at 0 for three. So. Special teams, a very big difference. And if you watched the power play closely in this game, the Sabres went for a different area of attack. They're still not moving around the way I would like, but rather than continue to try to force the puck to the face-off circle for one-timers, that is always the Sabres' main objective on the power play, is to get Tage Thompson a one-timer to get a wrist shot from the right circle from maybe a Dylan Cousins or a Casey Middlestat. But in this game, the plan of attack was, let's get the puck down low. We'll cause havoc there on a mini two-on-one because Montreal is only dropping one defender back. And that's exactly how they scored the first of the two power play goals with Jeff Skinner dropping down, great patience, slides the puck over to Casey Middlestat, who one times it uh, past Jake Allen for the goal. So it was a, a strong power play. I will say, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt because while the Sabres have been the 29th ranked power play this season, uh, Montreal is the 30th ranked penalty kill. So it, it took playing a really bad PK to get a couple of goals in the power play, but hopefully they can carry that momentum into some further contests. I, I just thought up and down the ice, the Sabres had a lot more speed in this game. The only period, I would say, the only time where they really looked like they might be in trouble 
right after Rasmus Dahlin turns the puck over in a horrible fashion. You're on the power play. Dahlin, way too casual with the puck, turns it over. And then in turn, after turning it over, he stands in the middle of the ice in front of Joel Armia and screens Devin Levi. And Armia rips it over Levi's shoulder. Levi doesn't see it until after it's past Dahlin, doesn't get an angle on the shot, and it goes past his glove. So a bad play by Dahlin, horrible play by Dahlin. And after that goal, it really woke up Montreal. The Sabres were up 2-0. Armia scored to make it 2-1. And then for the next five minutes, here come here comes Montreal. They were just bur- buzzing in the Sabres' end, shift after shift after shift. They did withstand it, and in large part, thanks to Devin Levi, who we'll talk about more so in a minute. But Levi really carried them through that stretch. They got to the third period. Up two to one. That was huge. That was adversity. You ha- your best player, your best player, just made the mistake of the game to let them back in it, and you went through three, four, five shifts in a row where you just didn't have your head screwed on right. But you survived, and nice to have a goaltender for once in the last five years that can help carry you through that stretch. And they got through that stretch. They got to the third period. And then they outplayed Montreal from beginning to end. It took them a couple of minutes to get the first goal in the third. Jack Quinn at the 645 mark, 645 into the third period with a very skilled goal. The the little, I love what Quinn does before he shoots when he cuts to the middle. He cuts to the middle and he always has that little, stick handle back to change the angle of his shot and not in the way a lot of guys do. A lot of guys will toe drag the puck closer to their feet before they release it because that's going to give them a different angle to score on the goaltender in terms of the side to side. And guys like Austin Matthews and even Tage Thompson have mastered that over the years. Quinn does this a lot where he doesn't toe drag it to his feet. He toe drags it back which I don't really know if that has as dangerous of an effect, but it looks like it works. It's changing the depth of the shot, I guess, a little bit. That That's, you know, all you're trying to do is confuse the goaltender. As a, as a pure goal scorer, all you're trying to do is get a quick, you want a quick release, a powerful release, and you want some some confusion uh, and whatever, however you shoot it. And Quinn does do it a little bit differently on this goal and on others where he, moves it back, but it works for him. He still gets a ton on it. And on this one, as accurate as possible, left post to right post, and it was the puck was spinning, and it actually goes off the right post and into the net, bar to bar and in. Uh, a magic puck by Jack Quinn there. He is up to four goals on the season. He is the Sabres. Since he returned for to action, he is number one on the team in expected goals for this game actually by by the advanced numbers was not one of his stronger games, but he still contributed in in at least one moment. That big goal in the third to put him up 3-1. It was huge at the time. Really gave them some cushion. And he also added an assist. So Quinn now up to four goals and one assist in seven games played. He has been awesome. And I'm very excited to see what type of numbers he could put up the rest of the year. Quinn did not make one of my three sneaky stars of the night in part because as I mentioned, he did score that goal, but there were some tough shifts by that line, especially in the second period when they were starting to lose it a little bit. It was that line that I saw a couple times get trapped in their own end. So Quinn didn't make my top three. We'll get to that when we come back, continue on in this game. And then we'll also mention Sabres and Penguins, which is coming your way on Saturday. So stay tuned for that as I continue to, uh, as I try to do the show here, uh, as the United States and Sweden are playing in the World Junior gold medal game. Uh, I'll try not to react too much uh, as it happens. Or you know what? Why not? I, I might do it. It's uh, currently 3-1, three to 3-2 three to two USA going into the third period of time of recording. Uh, real quick, World Junior take. Again, we're going to do this more expansive once we can get Hadi Kalakash on from Lockdown NHL Prospects. But a quick take from me on this gold medal game. Noah Osland is the best player on the ice. Either team especially Sweden, but 
between both teams, I think Noah Oslin is the best player on the ice. Every play he makes looks like the right play. He has got so much confidence. He's putting the puck between his legs. He is just making defensemen look like idiots out there, back and forth, between the legs. Um, almost scored a between the legs goal, actually, on a rebound from behind the net. oslin has been unreal. He made seven good plays on their power play at the end of the second period that led to the three to two goal. So been super impressed. Uh, although as a United States hockey fan, I'm really hoping that he uh, doesn't get Sweden uh, to tie this game in the third period. Uh, time out here. When we come back by three stars from Sabres and Habs, and then we'll get to Sabres and Penguins coming up here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. We are presented by Sleeper. It is almost the halfway point of the Sabre season. And regardless of where they are in the current standings, although that's starting to look a little bit better, two wins in the last three, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. You could look at a bunch of different players, check out, you know, the likes of Tage or Tuck or Skinner. All you got to do is pick whether they'll record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. Use the promo code Locked On NHL, and you're going to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See sleepers' terms of use for details and locational availability. Sneaky Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Locked On's launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Be sure to check it out. They're covering all everything coming up in the this weekend for the National Football League, including a lot of uh, good stuff on the Bills and the Dolphins, which is the bet biggest game in the NFL this weekend. So check out the Locked On the locked on, excuse me, locked on sports today uh, for your 24 seven, the top stories of sports on YouTube, subscribe to the first ever national sports, 24 seven streaming channel. Okay. My three sneaky stars from Sabres and Canadians in Montreal. You got to start with star number one. And that is obviously going to be the kid that went back home for his homecoming. Devin Levi he was unbelievable. 32 saves on 33 shots. I mentioned in the first segment that he was huge for the Sabres after Darlene turned it over and let the Canadians back in, making it 2-1. The rest of that second period, the, the remaining 6-7 minutes, Levi was tremendous. Side-to-side -side movement, big glove saves. It extended into the third period where he flashed the leather, and the Sabres were probably going to win the game at that point anyway, but came out to challenge the shooter, Slavkovsky, and he flashed it. And that, I, I've had one listener ask me if that's a weakness of his game on our previous show, and the first goal that went in was on his glove side, so I went, oh, okay, this guy might be onto something. But Levi responded. He must have heard the criticism of uh, his glove hand because that glove was on fire last night other than the goal that was let in. Uh, by the way, on Levi... The first period, actually, really, his most impressive save was probably the the play that resulted in, like, a scrum after. Levi's got the leg splits across the net, and the puck is right on the goal line, and he held firm. He didn't slide back somehow. I don't know how he had the lower body strength to not get kicked back into the net, especially when Brendan Gallagher comes flying in at a million miles an hour trying to whack the puck in. Good job by the Sabres, by the way. Clifton, Cousins, especially for uh, coming to Levi's defense there and throwing Montreal uh, out of the crease after Gallagher went way too far. Uh, number two, sneaky star of the game, Jeff Skinner. Led the way. He was actually the game's number one star as voted on by the media. One goal and three assists for Jeff Skinner. And he really could have had two goals, but Tage kind of stole one from him. Um, a good finish by Tage just to make sure it went in, but Skinner had made the play to go around Allen, patient play, and he was going to slide it in. Um, but Skinner was very strong. Um, and if you look at some of his numbers, I mean, he leads the Sabres in goals with 16 uh, in 36 games and 15 assists. So 31 points in 30 
six games. And it is kind of incredible. He's second in the team at points, uh, tied with Dahlin, only behind Middlestat. Skinner has led the team in goals and has managed to do that. He's managed to maintain. He's almost at a 40-goal pace. He's managed to maintain that level of production while his two line mates have regressed on the season or been out in Tage and Alex Tuck. So great job by Skinner in this game. And then I'm going, you know, it's sneaky stars. I got to go a little sneaky on one of them, right? I'm going Henry Yoki Haru as the third guy that I'm, I'm giving a shout out here to. He only played 17 minutes and seven seconds of ice time, but he was their second leading defenseman in terms of five on five ice time. All of his ice time in this game uh, for the most part was uh, at five on five. He was second on the team on the blue line with a 59.7% expected goals for rate. And I just saw a bunch of really good plays by Yoki Haru. He was playing with Darlene on this night. Samuelson played the third pair. And Darlene, there was a mistake Darlene made in the first period. It was about to be a two-on-one going back the other way. And Yoki Haru raced over to the other side and broke the play up before it got to the blue line. He had another odd man rush breakup in the third period. He had one puck where I... This was not the Yoki Haru you're used to, the offensive guy, but he came into the offensive zone with speed right down the middle and ripped one off the goalpost. So he almost had a goal. He had another play on the right wall where he he carried it in and he kept the play alive and he just threw it to the net. It's kind of a simple play, but he caused a rebound the way he shot it. And there was there was chaos there and the puck was laying right in the crease. Had a saber been in the right area, had a saber been able to get there before the Canadians realized the puck was sitting there by itself, um, then Yoki Hari would have got a lot of credit for that play. So I want to make sure that I recognize him at least because I noticed him like four or five times making really nice plays uh, on a pair with Rasmus Dahlin. So those are my sneaky stars of the game. Uh, one comment on the game that I want to get to on Tage Thompson. Uh, and this comes from our text line. If you want to jump in and become a sortie where we're always reacting during the games and we're always going back and forth. And I love doing that. Uh, always try to get to everybody that's on there. You can join at joinsubtext.com slash locked on sabers. And this comment on Tage Thompson. Whenever Tage touches the puck, he seems to slow down. Why? Six foot six and a nuke of a shot, drive and use your feet. And I thought that was a really good commentary on Tage because I've pointed it out a couple times this year on the show that he's been good, but he's not playing at the at the MVP heart trophy candidate level that he was at one point last year. He's playing a little bit closer, I would say, to the level he did two years ago when he had 38 goals as opposed to the 50-goal pace last year. Um, and I do notice that comment as a big difference. He doesn't carry the puck with speed nearly as often, or at least I'm not noticing him do it nearly as often. And that's a little bit troubling, I would say. I don't think you really necessarily want that with a six foot six guy that, I mean, we were comparing him last year to Mario Lemieux. Why? Not just because he's big, not just because he could shoot. It's because he's skating through the, he's, like the wind out there. Like he's going to coast to coast. And that is not happening this year. He's getting the puck caught in his feet a lot. His skating looks off entirely to me where he's, he doesn't look balanced all the time. Even the goal that middle stat scores on the power play, where Skinner gets it down low and feeds it to him. Watch the play right before. Thompson does get it to him. In fact, it goes off the boards, and he goes as like kind of a spinorama backhand pass to get it down low. But Thompson almost falls down like three times before he manages to get the puck down low. And, you know, oftentimes I feel like that's going to result in a turnover. Luckily here it didn't. But his skating has looked off to me a little bit this year. Um, I know he's been hurt, and that probably has been a big part of it. He was wearing a cast until like a couple of games ago on his left wrist. So I do want to give him somewhat of a pass because he's been playing injured. And also another two goals and one assist last night, which means that Thompson now in his last six games is now up to he's now up to five goals and four assists. Five goals and four assists in his last six games. That that's you know we're getting back to it with the production, but we're still not quite seeing the the Sports Center 
top 10 plays, um, the highlight reel plays that he is, uh, that he became accustomed to pulling off last year. So just a quick thought on Tage Thompson. One more text line, actually, while I got it open uh, from the game on Thursday night. One fan texted in, one listener texted in, watched the game on about a 40-minute delay. All the notifications coming in while I watched made me nervous. The play by Darlene and the shorthanded goal, maybe one of the laziest plays I've seen from him. They all looked rattled after that. Good on them for settling down. Good to see Tage coming around and Quinn. Uh, Quinn, that guy was apparently the glue. Definitely added some spark. I'm not expecting any momentum to come out of this, but a 2-1 start in this nine-game stretch is nice. That's a good thought. You can't, man, this team all year, they've had games like that. And then the next game is a stinker where they undo all the goodwill that they built up with fans. So are we going to get that? Are we going to get that letdown game coming up against Pittsburgh? Well, let's talk about that game coming up next here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. We are presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. It's not just the hockey season and the NBA season going right now, but the NFL season, the regular season, it's wrapping up. But there is still time to get in on the action With FanDuel, you got Buffalo and Miami coming Sunday night. Really good opportunity. America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use. Lots of options. Live game, same game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and plenty more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup FanDuel official partner of the national football league. Sneaky Joe DiBiase back here on the locked on Sabres podcast. We've got Sabres and Penguins coming your way in Pittsburgh on Saturday night. And after that, it'll be a six game home stretch for the Sabres. And you probably didn't see it if you were watching Sabres and Canadiens, but The game of the night in the NHL on Thursday night. The Penguins and the Bruins went at it. Pittsburgh won that game 6-5 to uh, against Boston in Boston. So a very entertaining game. Watch the highlights back after, and it was very much back and forth. Now, the Penguins, though, in terms of the season, if you haven't been watching the standings, because you know what, Sabre fans, probably a little depressing to look at the standings. So maybe you don't know, Pittsburgh's been pretty bad this year. Pittsburgh is at 42 points. That is six better than the Sabres, and it is only one out of a playoff spot. But 19 and 18, 19 wins, 18 losses. They are where they've kind of been, which is they're fighting for one of the final playoff spots. That's the new age Pittsburgh Penguins in the uh, late stages of Sidney Crosby's career, of Evgeny Malkin's career, and of Crystal Tang's career and Eric Carlson now. So maybe bad was a little bit strong. I don't think they've been that bad. The record should be better, given the amount of talent that they have. That's really the point. And this is a game where, you know, the Sabres going into Pittsburgh, they never have success in Pittsburgh, but have, you know, had some strong, have some decent performances there uh, as of late. Um, If you look at, you know, a little bit earlier this season, was this a home game? No, sorry. I mixed them up. Uh, they were home for Pittsburgh when they won a couple of weeks ago uh, or in no, late November. It, at Pittsburgh was four to nothing in favor of the Penguins. So scratch that. They've at least beat the Penguins this year, but in Pittsburgh, yeah, definitely not uh, a strong point for the Buffalo Sabres. But this is a game where it's a team above you in the standings and you got to start knocking off teams above you if you want to get back in this race. A win streak is going to be necessary, but doing it against teams that you're in contest with is going to be vital as well. And Pittsburgh's one of those teams. If the Sabres were to win on Saturday night in Pittsburgh, they would close the gap to four points for the Penguins. And they could be as close if they get results in other areas. They could be within five points of a playoff spot uh, by Saturday night. They need a lot to happen for that to be true, but it's possible. So just that doesn't that kind of show though, just one win streak will get them back in this. I mean, they're seven points out right now with the game in hand, by the way, in Tampa. If they just put even like a four-game win streak together, then they're at least back in the race, I think. Um, It's all it takes, and they haven't even had one yet this year. Um, So that's what we're looking at for Sabres and Penguins. We don't have any information on starting goaltenders. Pittsburgh's off today, and yesterday they started 
uh, Tristan Jari, but that they could go anyway, any which direction on Saturday night. I would expect Ukapeka Lukanen for the Sabres. I think they'd probably go every other, but don't quote me on that. I do think there is at least some chance that they go back to Levi because, you know, hot goaltender, right? That, I mean, that's probably the way they're going to operate with these two. Maybe they go right back to Levi. But my if you made me bet, I would bet that it's probably going to be UPL. In terms of the roster, in terms of the uh, the lineup, I'd imagine that that will probably look about the same. You're not going to see Kyle Poso back this quickly. Um, and Ryan Johnson being a healthy scratch, I would likely expect that to be the case again. Unfortunately, I hope not. But again, that would be where I would uh, lay my money down. The Sabres in this game. For the odds, by the way, I missed on our same game parlay. I always hit on the, I, maybe I just need to make it the anytime goal of the day because I always hit on the anytime goals. Skinner in this game was my pick and he managed to score. He is the Montreal killer. Um, in terms of the Sabres odds though, against Pittsburgh tomorrow night, FanDuel Sportsbook has the Sabres as a plus 136 underdog, not as big of an underdog as you might think. They're not as big of an underdog as they were a favorite in Montreal. Uh, plus one and a half on the puck line, minus 170. So uh, that's what you're looking at for Sabres and Pens for a seven o'clock puck drop. Enjoy the game. If you're a Bills fan and you are really getting ready for the weekend for them, you've got Ravens and Steelers at 430. And if Baltimore wins, the Sabres or the Bills clinch a playoff spot. So could be a nice little sports night. You watch Pittsburgh and Baltimore at 430. That leads you right into Sabres and Penguins. So have some buddies over. Get you ready for uh, the Bills game on Sunday with the Sabres and uh, some football. All right. That's going to do it for us today here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Again, check out our text line. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Sabres. Check us out on YouTube where you can watch the show there. And you can also remember, watch Locked On Sports Today, the first ever 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube for national sports. Subscribe to Locked On Sports Today and listen wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for listening here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Hopefully talking to you next after a Sabres and Penguins win. Sabres over Penguins win here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Have a good weekend.